appreciate you tuning in to our station on Wednesday nights. We pray that you will share this video with your family and friends. Our scripture tonight will come from Psalm 150, verses 1 through 6 in the New Living Translation. Our subject matter for tonight is praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. That's all we're going to be talking about. And we're going to tell you why we should be praising the Lord. Verse 1 says, Praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty heaven. Praise him for his mighty works. Praise his unequal greatness. No one compares to our God. Thank you for the blessing of the word of God. 
Lord, we ask you to forgive us for our sins. We ask you to forgive us, Father God, for not following through. Father God, we ask you to forgive us, Father God, for being disobedient. Now, Lord, we ask you, Father God, to continue to walk with us. Cleanse us from all unrighteousness, as only you can. Bless us tonight that we will hear your word, that your word will be clear, that your word will fall on good soil, and that we will be better after Bible study than we were before we started. It's in Jesus' name we pray and we ask it all. Amen and thank God. Praise Him. to praise him for he is worthy of all the honor all the praise and all the glory thank god for another privilege to come to study his word tonight we begin a new chapter second thessalonians chapter three and we will be in verses one through five second thessalonians in the new testament the book is second thessalonians the chapter is three and we're looking at verses 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verses 1 through 5. The Apostle Paul is talking here, and he's talking to the church at Thessalonica. And not only is he talking to the church at Thessalonica, he's talking to the church of the 21st century. Uh, Paul, The Apostle Paul is speaking to the local church as well as the global church. And he is saying to us that we are a continuing prayer. The Apostle Paul begins this chapter by saying, finally, brethren, pray for us. He says, pray for us. If you want to make sure that things go well, you need to be praying. The world in which we live today is a world that's beat up. But God still answers prayer. Amen. He says, finally, brethren, so we understand that this is the final chapter of 2 Thessalonians. It is the final chapter of the letter to the Thessalonians. So he says, finally, brethren, when he say brethren or brethren, he's really saying that these are people of God, people who've been transformed by the love of God, people who have been changed they have been delivered, therefore they are Christians. They are Christians. He is talking to Christians. He says, finally, brethren, or brethren, pray for us. Certainly you want Christians to pray for you. Certainly you want those who know the Lord to pray for you. He says, pray for us. This word prayer, or pray, this word pray, it is a prayer of intercession. We are interceding for the men, women, boys, and girls that are in the body. Specifically here tonight, the Apostle Paul says to this church at Thessalonica, pray for us. He's saying, pray for my entire company. Pray for those who are on the battlefield for the Lord. Pray for us, meaning pray for those of us who are in ministry. He specifically talks about praying for the Apostle Paul, praying for Peter, and also praying for Silas. He's saying, pray for us. How much better would the world be if people would pray for the men of God instead of talking about the men of God? The Apostle Paul knows the value of prayer. Not only does he know the value of prayer, he knows the value of intercessory prayer. This word pray means to intercede. It means to supplicate. The word supplicate is synonymous to the word to beg. 
to ask of God, to beg of God. It is 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verses 1 through 5, and not verse 15, but verses 1 through 5. 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verses 1 through 5. And the Apostle Paul says, pray for us. In other words, we ought to be praying for those who are carrying the gospel of Jesus Christ. We ought to pray for them. Oftentimes, too often, people think those who are spiritual, those who are walking with God, those who love the Lord, are not in need of prayer. The songwriter says, it's me, O Lord, it's me, O Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Not only can the parishioners <laughs> sing this song, not only should the parishioners recite the words of this song, but those of us who are in ministry, those of us who lead out in ministry, those of us who pastor churches, those of us who minister on a regular basis, we need these words and we need to tell God, God, whatever you do, Lord, remember, I'm the one standing in the need of prayer. The Apostle Paul knew, regardless of what was going on, how powerful he was, regardless of how many languages he, could, he was able to speak, he still needed prayer. So the Apostle Paul says, pray for us. I say to you tonight, pray for me. So the Apostle Paul says, finally, brethren, pray for us. And he says, pray for us for our work. We are called to ministry. We're called to get the word of God out. Pray for us because there are hindrances. There are, there's opposition all around us. He says, pray for us that the word of the Lord may run swiftly. Mm -hmm. He says, pray for us as we operate in ministry. Pray for us that God's word, the word of the Lord, will run, it might run, it may run, it will run swiftly. This, this phrase, run swiftly, means that we are praying that the word of God spread hastily. 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 We, are, we are praying that the word of God have, has free course. We are praying that the word of God will speed ahead. That's why we offer, offer we ought to offer people God's speed. We want the word of God to, to speed ahead. We want the word of God to be spread, and we want the word of God to spread hastily. We want the word of God to have free course. So this phrase that the may the word, may the word of God run swiftly, it means that we are praying for the man of God. We are praying for the work of the Lord. We are praying that the word of God runs with swift feet, that it runs swiftly. Too often, we are not spreading the word as we ought to. We ought to spare, spread the word of God and not the gossip. We ought to spread God's gospel and not man's gossip. So Paul says, pray for us. And when you pray for us, pray for our work. When you pray for us, pray that God's word, the word of the Lord, will run swiftly. He says the word of the Lord will run swiftly. The Lord, the word Lord, the word Lord, the word Lord is the one who is ultimately the final authority. He's talking about Jesus Christ, the word of Jesus Christ, the word of God. He says, the Lord, the, the supreme divinity, we want to pray that the word of God, God's word, not man's word. Too often, we don't do our word study well, and we deliver to the people our words when we ought to be delivering to the people God's word. If we give the people God's word, then God's word will change the people. So here the apostle Paul says, make sure you pray. And when you pray, make sure you pray with the attitude and, and with the assurance that the word of God will take on fast feet and run. 
is the word of God. He personifies the word. He, he gives the word of God characteristics of a person, mainly as a person who is running. It's not a it's not worth it's it's not worth it just for us to lackadaisically uh, deliver the word of God. We got to deliver the word of God with enthusiasm. I watched a piece today, uh, a piece of video today on Jesse Owens and how Jesse Owens participated in the long jump, broad jump. He participated in the hurdles. And he was setting one Olympic record and one world record after the other. He participated in a 100-yard dash at that time. And he was breaking one record after the other. I thought to myself, how much better would this world be if we ran and jumped and sprint like Jesse Owens when we have the word of God? We ought to get in a hurry to deliver the word. The situation that we are in now is critical. Amen. The message has to be urgent. And he says, pray for us that the word of God may run swiftly and that the word of God be glorified. This word glorified means to be magnified and it means that it, the word of God need to have honor. So the word, the word uh, glorified means to magnify, to blow it up, to make it big, to make it exceedingly bigger than what men normally see. In other words, we want to make sure that the word of God runs with swiftness and that it will be glorified and it will have honor. Too many times people do not honor the word of God. We have to give the word of God honor. We have to make sure that we value God's word over any other man's word. And whenever a man, a woman, boy, or girl stand and they deliver what they say is the word of God and it doesn't line up with the word of God, then they lie on God. And certainly we don't want to lie on God. We want to make sure that we say what the author has said over 2,000 years ago. He says that to pray for us, brethren, Pray for us that the word of God may run swiftly and be glorified just as it is with you and that we may be delivered from unreasonable and wicked men for not all have faith. Look at what he says. He says, we want you to pray, brethren. Paul, the apostle Paul asked for prayer because the word of God needs to run with swiftness. You pray that the word of God runs with swiftness. You see, we have worldwide broadcast now. Right. The word of God is able, has been given a medium by which even the poor preacher, <laughs> even the poor <laughs> Sunday right. school teacher right. can get on a live broadcast yes, right. for no money. <laughs> let, me, let me just share with you, just a few years ago, People were trying to get us on broadcast and they, they wanted us to pay $100 per minute or $100 for five minutes. Let me tell you now, if a preacher is not broadcasting now, he has a problem. Because all you have to do is just go buy an iPad, buy a tablet, buy a phone or use the existing phone that you have and you have an instant medium by which you can broadcast. There is no excuse now. For the word of God being hindered. He says, he says, pray that this word of God runs swiftly, that it will be glorified, that it will have honor. He says, just as it is with you. The word of God is with you now. We have shared with you. Uh, the apostle Paul is saying to the church at Thessalonica, we have shared with you in person. We have shared with you through letter. And we know that there are some evil opponents out there. He calls them in the text. New King James calls them unreasonable and wicked men. He says they are unreasonable and wicked. They, they are unreasonable and wicked. In, in, in other words, number one, they are unreasonable because they are out to do harm. 
Number two, he says, they're wicked, mean they are evil. So these are the men, women, boys, and girls that are doing the devil's work. Another translation says it like this, that we will be delivered from unreasonable and the wicked. And this word wicked means the unreasonable ones and the wicked simply means that we will be delivered from the evil one. And the evil one is the devil. Mm -hmm. When we get off the broadcast, I want you to look back, spell out the word evil, then spell out the word devil mm -hmm. and tell me what you have in common. You ought to have some evil and devil, and you ought to be able to look at it and see the commonality there. Let me know. Let me know what you see in common. When you look at the word evil, and you look at the word devil, there's something that ought to stand out that you've been missing all your life. Anything that is evil is of the devil. Anything that the devil puts out is evil. Oh, the devil lets you have a little here and a little there, and he, he makes sure that you can stand and present the word every now and then, but the devil is full of evil. He's the evil one. The apostle Paul is saying to this church at Thessalonica, y'all pray, please. And when you pray, pray against the unreasonable, wicked men and make sure you pray against the devil because the devil is the father of evil. He's the father of, lie, father of lies and he is the accuser of the brethren. He closed uh, verse, verse number two out by saying, for not all have faith. He says, not all believe. He's not all, not all who with you, not all those who are around you, not all those who are present, not all of them have faith. So you pray that the Lord shut down the devil. You pray that the Lord shut down the evil spirit. You pray that the Lord shut down evil men because there are some among you and not all those among you have faith. Not only is he saying that there are not some among you have faith, they are not actually operating against you but their faith has not been built to the point that they can sustain the assault of the devil. He says, you all pray for us that the world, the world will heal the word of God because you've heard it. It has made you better. Now I want you to pray that others who haven't heard the word and those who are hearing the word and those who will hear the word that they will believe and they will be rescued. This word delivered, he says that the Lord will deliver us. This word deliver means rescue. He says he wants the Lord to, to rescue us from the unreasonable wicked men, for not all have faith. Move to verse number three, he says, but the Lord is faithful. He says, not all have faith. Not all believe, not all are trusting in the word of God, but the Lord, the Lord, the word Lord means the supreme authority, the master, the one who is really in control and the one that's really in charge. You see, oftentimes I, I heard a, a pastor, Pastor Ronnie Booker say, those who are in charge are not always those who are in control. He says, men in the household are sometimes in charge, but they're not always in control. So he says in verse number three, Second Thessalonians chapter three, verse number three, he says, but the Lord is faithful. This Lord, the supreme authority, the one that's in control, he is faithful. The word faithful means he's trustworthy. Regardless of what you're going through, <clears throat> God is somebody you can trust because God is trustworthy. Jesus is trustworthy. The Holy Spirit is trustworthy. 
the supreme authority, the final authority, God himself, you can bank on what he said. He is faithful. This word faithful means he is trustworthy. You can depend on what God says. You can't depend on men and women, but you can depend on what God says. He says, but the Lord is faithful who will establish you and guard you from the evil one. The Lord is faithful. I told you he's supreme in authority. The buck stops with God. Our present president says the buck stops with him. He he takes full he takes he takes full responsibility. Our previous uh, president says no, I take no responsibility. Tearing up stuff, but he takes no responsibility. Putting his hands in the midst of stuff, but he takes no responsibility. God is not like that. The Apostle Paul says the Lord is faithful, and he, the Lord who is faithful. He is the same one who will establish you and guard you from the evil one. This word established means he will confirm. This word established means that God will strengthen you. So if you're, you're not faithful, understand that God is faithful. And if you are struggling, he says right here in verse number three, that the same God who is faithful he will establish you. This word establish, he will confirm you and he will strengthen you. Good God Almighty. He will strengthen you. He will, he will confirm you and will guard you from the evil one. This word guard means he will keep you. The word God not only means that he will keep you, but he will preserve you. The word God not only means that he will keep you and preserve you, the word God means he will protect you. In the country, they would put up canned goods and they would put them in a jar. We call them canned goods because they come in a can now from the store. But back home, they had what was called preserves. And they were in a jar. And the jar would be tightened down on it once you put some wax on the top. I, and that wax would help to preserve it. Let me tell you, the God we serve, he is a preserving God. And, and when we put our, when he put us into our Christian lives, he seals us. Our salvation is sealed mm -hmm. to the day of redemption. And that, just visualize that little thin piece of, of, of white stuff, that little thin piece, piece of, of, of clay-like stuff, that little thin piece that sits on the top of the preserves, that wax preserves it until you crack it open. The good news tonight is God will preserve us. Yes, sir. God will keep us. God will protect us. God has a way of guarding us. He will guard you from the evil one. There's that evil again. The word evil. What do you see when you put it next to the devil? <laughs> do you put the evil and the devil in two separate arenas? No, you can't. The devil will make things look good for you, but it's all about being evil. The devil will make things look appealing to you, but at the end of the day, it's really evil. The devil will give you new stuff, but at the end of the day, it is evil. The devil motives is evil. And when the text talks about the evil one, it's talking about de the devil, Satan, Lucifer, the accuser of the brethren. Yeah. He says that God is God has the ability to strengthen you and to guard you, preserve you and protect you from the evil one. Amen. I thank God for God. I thank God that God is able to keep us. You see, the devil wants you to believe that he's mighty. Mm -hmm. He can do mighty acts. He can do great miracles. But the, even though the devil has proven to many that he's mighty, he's not almighty. The God we serve is almighty. 
He is the one. God, God is the one that we ought to put our confidence in. Let's look at verse number four. Number four says, verse number four, 2 Thessalonians chapter three, verse number four says, and we have confidence in the Lord concerning you, both that you do and will do the things we commanded you. He says, we have confidence, not in you, but we have confidence in the Lord. This word confidence means assurance. We have assurance, assurance. You see, you get insurance in case something happens. But when you have assurance, you know God is able to keep you from anything happening. And in the midst of troubles, God can hold back the devil where he won't take it any further. So we have the confidence. We have the assurance in the Lord. We have confidence in the Lord concerning you. We have so much confidence in the Lord, we believe that the Lord will keep you. We believe that you can't keep yourself, but God can keep you. We have the confidence. We have the assurance. We believe it with all our inner being that the Lord, when he speaks concerning you, when he moves concerning you, when he allowed things to happen concerning you, we believe that the Lord can continue to protect you. Yes. Let me tell you, we ought to take our shots. We ought to take our vaccinations. <laughs> but it's the Lord that keeps us. <laughs> we, we ought to just follow the science and, and watch what God does and, and be, be blessed by what God has put on earth to protect us. But when it all comes out in the rinse, it's God that keeps us. And God has given us a vaccine that can keep us. Even though man is using it, even though man has come to the point where they say they've discovered it, it's God that keeps us. Yes. And let me just back up right here. Those of us who are baby boomers and those who are older, before we even went to school, we had to have vaccines. We had to have shots. So I don't know what's going on now that people don't want to do a vaccine when we've taken them and, and we, we, we knew that if we didn't have our shot record when we showed up in the first grade, we were going back home. If we didn't have our shot records when we showed up at, in Head Start, we were going on, on our way back home. And now adults don't even want to take shots. Mm -hmm. God protects us and he protects us by the means that he's placed on planet earth. And when you've exhausted all your means, then God do some supernatural stuff. Mm -hmm. But he's able to protect us. In the text, he's talking about protecting their spiritual walk. He's talking about protecting them from the wiles of the devil. What people have not gotten yet is the fact that we're in a spiritual warfare. This warfare is spiritual. <laughs> This warfare cannot be fought with flesh and blood weapons. It is a spiritual warfare. And when you're in a spiritual warfare, God is the only one who can protect you. You got to use spiritual weapons. And Paul says, concerning you, concerning you all, we believe and we are sure that the Lord concerning you, both that you will do, and yet you will continue to do. He's saying, what you're doing now in the Lord, we believe that the Lord will keep you, the Lord will protect you, and you will be obedient. Just as you are doing now, he's what he's saying. You will continue to do. So when he says, both that you do presently and will do future, the things that we've commanded you, he's saying, hang in there. Don't give up. Don't give in. Don't give out. If I'm talking to somebody here now that, that think they have lost their salvation because you have gone the wrong way, hang in there. Once God gives you salvation, you can't lose it. And if you are down and out because you don't feel spiritual, just hang in there. Your salvation is not tied into your feelings. But verse number five answers that question, really. Verse number five says, 
Now may the Lord direct your hearts into the love of God and into the patience of Christ. He says, now may the Lord, the one who is supreme in authority, may the Lord direct. This word direct means to guide you, to lead you, to usher you. Whenever you walk in the church and the ushers are doing their responsibilities, the ushers are doing their job, the ushers are on their post. If you walk into a church, if the usher is really on his or her post, they will direct you, they will lead you, they will guide you. How much more may the Lord direct you? Direct your hearts. We want the Lord to direct us. So we want the Lord to guide us. We want him to guide our hearts. The word hearts here is not talking about the muscle that pumps blood to every extremity of our bodies. This word heart means our minds, our spirits, our thoughts, our focus. Many times we get off focus. We ought to be praying, Lord, lead us, guide us, direct us. Direct our innermost being, our hearts. Direct our innermost beings, our minds. Direct our innermost beings, our spirit. You do have a spirit. And sometimes and sometime you can come in and folk can see your inner spirit on your outer spirit. Your countenance can be disturbed and people can see how disturbed you are based on your spirit. God got our spirits. God guide our minds. God guide our hearts. He says, guide us into the love of God. Guide us into the love of God. God has a, a love for us that's above everything that we can imagine. We ought to have this word love, this phrase rather, love of God. It, it means that there's some progress that needs to take place. There's some progress that has to take place, and, and it has to be that God plants his love in us that we can move forward, that, that our spiritual man can be renewed. God has, has planted in us his love, and then he says, patience, that, that your hearts will be directed into the love of God. This, this love is agape, unconditional love. God loves us with an unconditional love. And then it says, into the patience of Christ. This word patience means we're waiting. We, 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 we believe God and we're waiting on Jesus. <laughs> we believe that God is trustworthy. We believe that Jesus is coming back. It says, into the patience of Christ. Word Christ means the anointed one. There's none like him, Jesus the Christ. We want to wait on him. Be patient. No man knows the day nor the hour that Jesus will return. So we have to patiently wait on him. In our waiting, we ought to be working. In our waiting, we just don't take our hands and fold and wait on him. We're waiting as we're working. Yes, faith without works is dead. And let me just share with you, you have to be working until the Savior coming, until he gets here because he is coming. Jesus the Christ is coming back again. The same Jesus that died on Calvary. The Jesus they buried in a borrowed tomb. The Jesus that rose early that third day morning. He is coming back again and we ought to have patience to wait. And in our waiting, we ought to do the things that the Apostle Paul says for us to do. We ought to believe that he's coming back. We ought to pray for the preachers. We ought to pray that the word of God runs with swiftness. And as we pray, we ought to become catalysts to make the word of God run with swiftness. We ought to make sure that we make sure that the word of God has God's speed. So we have to share the gospel. 
share the good news of Jesus Christ. Warn men, women, boys, and girls that Jesus is coming back to get a church without a spot or wrinkle. We have to tell people with the swiftness. We have to tell them with speeding ahead. We have to tell them with free course that, that Jesus is coming back. And we thank God for delivering us. And God can use you to help somebody else get delivered. That God will not allow the evil one, the unreasonable and wicked men to overtake us and overshadow us. See, what was going on here, there were a lot of people trying to, to, to bully these saints away from Jesus. Don't let people bully you. And the only way you won't let them bully you is that you know the word of God. The next time the Seven Day Adventist or, or some other denomination walks through your door, don't hide in the back. Go out and meet them outside and deliver the word of God because you know the word of God. If you don't know the word of God, learn the word of God. Because wicked men are all about us. The devil is on his job and he's doing a good job. The question is, are we doing good jobs? of making sure that the word of God runs with swiftness. Deliver the word of God and get in a hurry. The situation is critical. The message is urgent. We got to get in a hurry to deliver the word of God. And if you know, if you know that you know that you know that the story of Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection the gospel of Jesus Christ is the only thing that changed men. You ought to let people know that that's, that's the message that they need. And you ought to be delivering the message. Too many people are bashful. Too many people refrain from delivering the message. Somebody ought to be convicted tonight. If you haven't led anybody to Christ in the last two years, as bad as situations have been, you have not led not one person to Christ. The Bible says run with swiftness. Get your neighbor, get your family member, get your friend, get your relative, get you somebody and, and lead them to Christ. Talk to them about Jesus, that the word of the Lord will run with swiftness. There may be somebody present with me today that have never trusted Jesus as your personal savior. This is your moment. This is your opportunity to get to know Jesus. All you have to do is believe the story that over 2,000 years ago, on a skull hill called Calvary, Jesus died between two thieves. Mean men killed him on an old rugged cross. He died a voluntary, a voluntary death on that cross that day. Jesus Christ died. They pierced him after his death and he it was proven that he was already dead. They took him off the cross, laid him in a borrowed tomb. Early that third day morning, Jesus got up with all power and heaven and earth in his hand. He got up to save you. He got up to deliver you. He got up that you can go to heaven. He rose early that third day morning and you can be saved right here, right now. The door of the church is open. The invitation is extended to you. You can be saved right here, right now. If you did desire to know Jesus, if you desire to have Jesus in your heart, just bow your head and repeat after me and invite him in. He will come in and fellowship with you. And most of all, he will save you and you will qualify for heaven. Will you repeat after me, bow your head and repeat after me and invite Jesus Christ into your life? Just say these words, Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God.
I believe that you died for my sins. I believe that you rose from the dead. Now come into my life. And make me a new creature. Thank you for saving my soul. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. We believe if you honestly prayed this prayer, you're now born again. We believe that you're going to heaven when you die. And most of all, you can run with swiftness and tell others about the goodness of God. There may be others who struggle in the midst of their Christianity. And every time you take one step in the direction of the Lord, something knocks you back two steps. I want to pray for your deliverance tonight. I want to pray that God gives you the power, the strength. The Bible says that he will strengthen you. He will guard you. He will keep you. He will protect you. Lord God, we come now, Lord, praying for those who were saved, but they wrestle, as the Apostle Paul says, within and without. We pray that you strengthen them. We pray that you preserve them. We pray that you keep them. We pray that you guard them. We pray that you strengthen them and confirm them, Father God. Give them a new feeling that they can move on. Give them excitement. Give them structure. Give them the ability to walk with Christ. And Lord, we ask you to keep the glory, all the honor and all the praise. Allow us to be beneficiaries of your many blessings. It's in the strong, mighty, powerful, anointed name of Jesus Christ we pray. And we ask it all. Amen. There may be others who are listening to this broadcast who do not have a good Christian church home. I recommend this one, the New Beginning Church, where Jesus is the center of attention and the main attraction, where Jesus is the captain of the ship, where Jesus had died for us and rose from the dead. You can join us locally here in the city of Houston or you can join us globally by going on and becoming a member of the New Beginning Church. If you're, living, if you're listening by way of this live broadcast, you can inbox me and let me know that you want to be a member of the church. If you're listening later, you can go ahead and go to our website and, and click on the button that says become a member and then push submit we'll be alerted that you want to be a member of the New Beginning Church. Our website is nbcsouls.org nbcsouls.org We'll be glad to have you as a member of the New Beginning Church. If you've rededicated your life tonight and you've reached out and become a newborn Christian tonight, Invite me and let me know so I can rejoice with you, celebrate with you, and welcome you to this great family of faith in Jesus Christ. Thank you so much for joining us here tonight at the New Beginning Church at our remote location. Thank you for being a part of our service. We enjoyed having you. To all our visitors, thank you for being a part. It is now offering time. It is time to give to the Lord through tithes, offering, and sacrificial gifts. It is offering time. This is a moment that we set aside to, to show our appreciation and our obedience unto the Lord. You can mail your offering in, your tithes in, your financial gifts in, your support in, to New Beginning Church, P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. That's P.O. Box 
503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. Or you can give your offering by way of Zelle, your tithes by way of Zelle, or your financial gifts to the New Beginning Church by way of Zelle. Our Zelle account is lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Lifting.jesus at yahoo.com is our Zelle account. Let us go to God and pray. Father God, we thank you, Father God, for this opportunity to give. We ask you to bless every giver. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank God. Let us continue to pray. Let us continue to give. Let us continue to move forward in the Lord as we continue to lift others in prayer who are bereaved and uh, those who are sick. We want to continue to pray for the Warner Gazette Lewis family in the death of Miss Ivy. Miss Ivy Warner has passed away at age 98 years old. 98 years old, what a blessing. The Lord has blessed this mild man, smiling woman to live 98 years. And we want to thank God for that. And we want to pray for her family members, the Warner, the Gazette, the Lewis family. We want to lift them in prayer. We also want to pray for the Banda family and the Garza family, also for bereavement and the loss of their loved one. And we want to lift Sister Lydia Darrington before the Lord in her moment of sickness. We thank God for this privilege tonight to, to continue to pray for him. Paul says, pray for us. Pray for the men of God. Pray for the women of God. Pray for the children of God. Pray for those who are ministering on behalf of the Lord. And we know that God will strengthen you. He will keep you. He will guard you. He will preserve you and protect you. And I'm praying for you and you pray for me. Let us go to God in prayer. Father God, we thank you now for these who have been such a blessing to your kingdom. We pray, Father God, for these families. We pray that you lift them up. We pray for these individuals. We pray that you encourage them. Lord, we ask you to heal as only you can heal. Bless as only you can bless. Keep as only you can keep. Bless them, Father God, that they will turn to you. Look for you, the author and the finisher of our faith, to Jesus the Christ. We pray, Father God, that you bless us now as we leave this setting, that you would not leave our presence. We pray, Father God, for every church that is delivering the word of God. Lord, we pray that you guard them, guide them. We pray, Father God, that you preserve them, direct them. We pray, Father God, that you continue to walk with us as we walk with you. We ask you, Father God, to bear us up in these tough times, that we will rejoice with you and we will tell men, women, boys, and girls about the goodness of God. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling, unto him the only wise and only true God, unto him be power, be glory, and dominion, until we meet again, let us join in by saying, Amen, Amen, Amen. God bless you and God keep you is our prayer.